All right, y'all, we're live. We're back. I haven't been in the live streams in a few weeks. We've had Patrick Laster coming in, which is awesome. He does such an awesome job of explaining down the, the concepts. And Dylan Black, who's in the chat tonight, he's doing lots of reviews for us. He'll do LEQs in a few weeks. So you guys are kind of already introducing yourselves, but if you could, if you haven't yet, put in the chat where you're coming from. I want to know where you are. Um, I am currently in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania. And... It just snowed a little bit here last night, but we certainly did not get any sort of like polar vo vortex like some of y'all in the Midwest. I don't know how you're surviving that. I really miss living in California personally without a winter season. So listen, I'm going to be talking about the industrialization period tonight, all about Key Concept 5.1. We're going to cut through causes, effects, um, responses to industrialization. And we're also going to compare Great Britain and Japan, which will really help you out in, really, you could get any kind of question on this. Like, we're, we're right in the thick of, you know, the content where you could get a DBQ, you could get an LEQ, a shortest answer question is going to be on multiple choice. Like, you're going to see industrialization somewhere on your test. There's no way it's going to be skipping something, you know. Um, plus, you're studying industrialization right now. So, uh, you know, we got to be ready. We wanna, I want to get your grades up. So I, I looked it up, it was something like 93 days until the exam. So if you're here in 93 days uh, and you're thinking, oh, no problem, I'll be fine, um, then hit a five in the chat because you're feeling like you're already gonna get a five. If you hear 93 days and you're crying, then uh, hit a one or anywhere in between. Where are you feeling? How are you feeling about the test? One through five. Don't give me a zero, don't give me negatives. I know y'all are better off than you think you are, um, but, yeah, look, look at all these ones and two. Ugh. Stress, I know. I know the stress is here. So that's why we have Fiveable. As a teacher, I want to help you guys be less stressed. I want you to pass these exams. The exams that I passed in college that the rest of us at Fiveable passed in, passed in high school saved us money in college. It's worth it. So, um, you know, we're doing live streams every Monday night at 8 p.m. Myself or Patrick or Dylan will be here. We'll be explaining you to the concepts making sure you understand them, making sure you know what to study. Because the thing with AP World is there's a lot. There's 10,000 years. It's not like some of the other subjects that, you know, like you can, it feels like you can fit them in a box. AP World just feels like it goes on forever. So I'm trying to cut it down for you. I'm trying to keep you guys focused. Next week will be imperialism. You should, before you leave the page tonight, at some point, RSVP for next week. The link is next to you, next to the video. Called, it's about imperialism. Patrick Laster will be here. And it's going to be dope. All right. So um, we're going to jump. I'm going to jump in. Oh, and starting tonight. Starting tonight, we're doing Kahoot games at the end of every live stream. Woohoo! And not even that, the actual Kahoot game, we're only going to have to use Kahoot for the next few weeks. And then the Fiveable Trivia app is going to be a thing. And it's going to be popping, and I, I cannot wait for you guys to see it. So stay tuned. At the end of tonight, we're going to play Kahoot. Um, stick around till the end so that you can play and be ready. All right. So um, put something. Let's see. Put, a, put an emoji in the chat about how you're feeling right now. If you can't do an emoji because you don't have the, I don't know. If you can't, get, can't do an emoji, then you can put a word. Give me an emoji of how you're feeling right now. But that one turned into like an emoticon. All right, let me share my screen while you guys do that. There's no emoji to explain how bad I feel. My goodness. Well, we gotta we gotta fix that. We gotta feel a little bit better. All right. So my hope is that by the end of tonight, you're gonna be feeling a lot more stoked about all of it, right? So I want you guys to be feeling like. I got this. I want those emojis to not be so depressing. Um, oops, I don't want to share that. Okay, so listen. Presenter view. Just getting set up here to show you guys the slides. These slides will be available for Fiveable Plus members, same as the replay. So tonight we'll be going for about an hour. And if you want to watch this replay another time or you want the slides, make sure you get into Fiveable Plus while we're still in the early bird. Okay, so it's it's 20 bucks for the whole year for every single subject included. Um, and you get like May cram sessions. So you can check that out. The link is just right below me. 
and let's do this. Hide that. Why is it so little? That's better. All right, industrialization. By the way, guys, if you're not following us on Instagram, we're putting up all kinds of memes and stuff, trying to, trying to make this all, you know, more fun and exciting. So follow us on IG. We'll, we'll follow you back. Oh, man, did this not even show the... It's not going to show my, my emojis in here. All right, well, anyways, I'll pop out of the slide when we get to that one. So... What is industrialization? So when you've learned about this before in middle school, uh, it was probably just referred to as the Industrial Revolution. So the Industrial Revolution is part of this key concept, right? That's like, that's the beginning. That's a, it's a set event. It's a time in which industrialization happened basically in Great Britain. But the process of industrialization is something larger. And that's what is this unit is getting at, right? It's about increasing the mechanization of production. Okay. Know what the word mechanization is. You, we've seen that word before in the DBQ, in the LEQ. We, that word will come up. Just make sure that you understand that mechanization is referring to, you know, mechanical using machines to um, drive production. Right. So instead of doing things by hand, doing things by machine, so you can do it a whole lot faster, increases the amount of things that are produced. With that comes a whole bunch of social changes that we're going to talk about. You know, society is affected by the fact that there's more stuff. Different businesses are are affected. There's more people because there's more food. There's just more time, right? I don't have to spend all my time doing things by hand. I I have more time to do things now. Therefore, I can spend time doing things for fun, or I can go to school and learn how to read. You know, so tons of social changes. It happens first in Great Britain, then it goes to Western Europe which is really just kind of a sign of like geography um, and then to North America. And then from there it expands out Japan, Russia, India, the Ottoman empire. So around the world, it's going to spread through um, places that don't go through like their own process of industrialization. It's more about like the fact that they were colonies and stuff. So, all right. So just so that you guys know, the chat is for you. I I'm looking at the chat, but I'm not going to follow it if there's a whole lot of stuff going on. At any point, if you have a question, something you really want me to spend some time and talk through, put it where it says ask a question, and I promise you I will um, answer it. All right, so I'll either answer it at the end or I'll answer it as we go, most likely at the end. Uh, and no, there's not a link to these documents. These, this, these slides are exclusively for Fiveable Plus, so you got to sign up to get these slides. We're not quite up there yet, actually. Okay, so why does the why does the Industrial Revolution start in Britain? This is something that comes up in every class, every textbook. There's at least one paragraph about this. Um, I've only kind of listed a few of the reasons. There are more, more reasons as to why why Britain, why not China, All right? So at, by this point, China what had the largest economy. China was the one to watch. Like they're the ones that should have industrialized first, but Britain does it first and is really because of these reasons that propelled them to, to get there faster. Uh, first is their location, just basic geography. The fact that they are, they have a lot of coal and iron ore in their just natural reserves. They're just located near rivers and canals. That location advantage is part of the reason why they industrial, industrialized first. Second is just a access to resources. Great Britain at this point already has a head start on colonization. They've got colonies across the world. And so because of that, they have money, access to markets, access to materials. They have more access to the things that they need in order to then industrialize. Uh, third is population growth. Just before been, whoops. Looks like I froze for a second. All right, I'm back. Just before this, there had been a, an agricultural revolution. Not the like first one, but another one where there's just better farming practices, better uses of like crop rotations. And because of that, there's more food. And if you've watched my live streams before, the thing to remember, more food 
equals more people. Every time, no matter where it is in the world, no matter the year, more food, more people. All right, so this is what happened. Because in Great Britain, they had this population growth. Population like doubled, essentially, in the years before this, in, like, the, in a century. So all those people then can be at and can be working in factories. That's just human capital. Okay, and then the last one is like property protection. So what makes Great Britain unique from say Russia or Japan or the Ottoman Empire um, or India is that it's not the state that's pouring the money into industrializing, it's, it's private industry, right? It's private entrepreneurs. It's people who then put money into an idea, into a business, and grow it from there. So because of different laws in Britain that protected those people, there was able to be more investments. Private investments were encouraged and protected. And so that's what happened. So that's how Britain, that's what happens first. More, There's just more money. There's more capital to, to use and people are investing it and it's good for British economy. All right, so you said this relates back to my class um, on our warm up because modernization relates to industrialization. Yes, yes. So that's a good point. Um, the words industrialization and modernization are, are really used interchangeably in this context. You know, um, modernization can be used to like talk about other things rather than just like factories, but they're kind of used interchangeably here. So you're going to see that a lot for both of them. And then also like mechanization. Okay. All right, so like I said, so it starts in Great Britain and then it spreads out. So first it goes to France and Germany. France and Germany are so close to Great Britain. It just had to cross over the English Channel and there it is. So part of the reason why it goes there first is that it's just close. Second, um, they have a similar geography, right? So all those reasons why Great Britain was, you know, had that advantage is the same thing for France and Germany, they, they have rivers and coal reserves and iron ore. They have those things as well. So France and Germany comes next, except that they were originally delayed by things like the French Revolution, where people were more, were more focused on um, the French Revolution and reforms than they were on industrializing. Uh, in Germany, it was delayed by unification. So by the time you do get um, Germany fully unified, then you have like a super strong industrialized power. Uh, so actually I haven't posted the link in, in Fiveable Plus yet. That's something that I definitely, we should start doing. So unfortunately I won't be able to like give it to you quite yet. Apologies, Sophia. It will be there up, it'll be up there um, after the session. So, all right, so industrialization. So then it's spreading to the United States. The United States also has similar advantages of private property protections, um, river, tons of rivers. Think about the north, northeast, right? The eastern, east coast, tons of rivers. Uh, then you have growing workforce. Immigration is increasing a ton in the 19th century. So that workforce, just like the population doubled in England, the population is growing immensely in, um, Whoops. Okay, there we go. The population is growing immensely in the United States as well because of immigration. So similar reasons, similar types of industrializing, mostly like focused on private entrepreneurs putting their capital, raising funds, building businesses through that, um, things like that. Is this like Twitch? Yeah, kind of. It's like Instead of watching me play a video game, you would watch me lecture about industrialization. So, kind of. All right, let's see. Um, mostly, how did it how did it spread? This is a good question. How does industrialization spread? So, a bunch of ways. Mostly, it's through people moving, right? So, just like a religion spreads, it's just kind of the same way, right? These are it's a way of thinking. So they build a factory, they build these technologies in Great Britain. Someone takes those, those plans, brings them to the United States, builds them there. 
that's literally what happened. So that that is spreading out, you know, as far as it can get. That's how it spreads quickly. Um, the other way that it's going to spread through Japan and Russia is now that these countries, these Western countries are industrialized, they're going to start flaunting all their nice big weapons and the other countries are going to get nervous about that. So the other way that that happens is that you see the effects of industrialization, right? Someone didn't bring the like the blueprint of a factory, but I'm, I'm seeing now that the, they've got some you know superior weapons or all the production. I want to catch up. Hey, how'd they get all that money? You know? So those are the, some of the ways that it spreads one through it's some, some of it is like, um, what's the word intentional and other times it's unintentional. Let's see. Was this involved at all with cultural diffusion? Yeah, it's the same thing, right? So cultural diffusion is just the spread of culture. And in this case, it's more about spread of science and technology and theories, political theories, philosophies. So that's it's the same it's the same process. If you've taken human geography, then you know how ideas might then spread, right? So you might have a, a bigger power like the United States, like Great Britain doing something, other countries will do it because of the influence. It's just like, think about like Instagram influencers, you know, or celebrities, right? When a celebrity does something, if a celebrity starts wearing a certain type of shoe, hat, whatever, other people start doing it because they want to be more like that celebrity, uh, you know, and that you can have influencers anywhere. So it's the same, it's the same type of concept of how things spread. Okay, let me just answer this one. So because of the revolution, does that mean that France was behind and did not start until later? At first, yes, right? So like in the 1700s, by the end of the 1700s, Great Britain had industrialized or at least begun that process. France was still just finishing out their revolution. So at, you know, at the beginning of industrialization, yes, they were behind, but they do, they catch up. It's not like they're far behind for very long. So it doesn't end up being like a long-term catch up situation for them. <clears throat> uh, okay, I will answer this question after, when I get back to it. Okay, so Industrialization is spreading in Western European countries and in North America in a similar way where you have private industry. That's that's the main like catalyst of industrialization. Then you have like an entirely different. Um, a, a entirely different process in Japan and Russia. These are like the two big examples where it's it's really more state sponsored. So those are, it's entirely different, right? So it's rather than just people putting in their money, investing in innovation, you have the state, the government investing that money, trying to get the state to, you know, put in as much resources as it can so that the state itself can, can catch up with everybody else. So in Japan, you've got the Meiji Restoration. The actual like Meiji Restoration, we're gonna talk about that in a couple weeks when we go back to like revolutions. Um, I'm organizing all of these live streams by key concepts. So there's a couple of things that will come up in here, like the French Revolution just did, where I'm not going to explain the French Revolution, but it's all happening at the same time. So the Meiji Restoration is when Japan finally like opens up its borders, right? So it had been a very isolated country. This is like the end of like feudalism in Japan, um, and they will modernize. But part of the reason why they, they feel that urgency to modernize is because of connections with Westerners, right? So you've got like Matthew C. Perry coming through uh, and that is, hap you know, that is prompting industrialization. And Japan is essentially going to hire foreign experts to, to teach their industry leaders because they know that, okay, these other countries have industrialized, have modernized, we got to catch up. Let's bring them in to then show us how to do it. So it's it's state sponsored. It's bringing in foreign experts. Very similar in Russia. Um, it's foreign investments coming in. It's um, you know there's a similar catalyst of defeat in the Crimean War. Of uh oh, 
these other countries are developing better weapons than us, we've got to change. We've got to do something. So there's like three sets of reforms that happen that free the serfs, you know, all this entire class of serfs are now free to get different jobs. So that will, that like, you need that population of workers that will supply it for them. Um, they'll create the, the factory system. Um, what else? I think expanding suffrage, right? Expanding the vote. So there's a bunch of different like reforms that come into Russia and they're able to build the Trans-Siberian Railroads to connect Russia's borders from east to west. Uh, and that's massive because now they can move tons of products through the lands of, of Russia um, and uh, make that connections easier. And so rather than having to, for like if you're in Europe, rather than having to like go around, like around India into China, you could just go through Russia. So that's kind of how Russia gets involved. Um, and it's really, like I said, both of them, state sponsored. That's what you should think of. All right, what's the black emoji symbol? Yeah, so, so I put a bunch of emojis in these slides and they're not popping up, but um, there's one slide that I'll, 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 I'll make sure that it works, don't worry. So it was just like a, it was like the screaming emoji. Um, whatever. All right, let's compare industrialization processes. So we've been kind of doing this the whole time. Um, you know, a lot of this we've already talked about, but if we look at Great Britain and Japan, this would be a really good LEQ. I, I don't think there's been an LEQ about industrialization within the last several years. Definitely DBQs, but I haven't seen like this kind of thing. Uh, and this would work really well of comparing the two, there's a, you can see a lot of similarities here. So some of the ways that Japan and Great Britain were different were capital, right? So Great Britain is private. Japan is government investment. They also have this higher class, like of not really oligarchs, but like really wealthy, like aristocrats that are funneling in a lot of their money, it's kind of like the almost like robber barons of Japan. That's the Zaibatsu. Um, and Great Britain is not really bringing in that much, um, let's see, uh, Great Britain is not bringing in that much foreign, foreign, inv foreign, um, investments. All right. Anyways, getting distracted by the chat. All right. Um, energy and technologies are also different. Japan is really importing a lot of those things. You know, the government itself is bringing in the energy resources that they need, right? Like coal, like iron ore. They're bringing in the technologies they need because they didn't form there. Japan did not create the, you know, water frame, the cotton gin, those things. So the steam engine. So they're importing those technologies. Whereas in Great Britain, those were available in Great Britain. The actual like people to work they both had population growth very similar um, where there were there had been an agricultural revolution where more you know better practices better farming practices led to more food which led to more people uh, and then transportation both are using railroads and shipping methods a little bit of di difference in their social change Great Britain had ended up having a lot of reforms in class and gender. Japan also did like a lot. There was a lot of changes in terms of modernizing and westernizing, um, even like, you know, more rights for women in general. But at the same time, there were still a lot of traditional like footholds within the Japanese society and those remained. So this is a little bit of a comparison between them. Okay, let's see. All right, how did Japan benefit from bringing in technology if that costs money? Okay, so if you are producing textiles and you're hand weaving them, you can only produce X amount. Uh, if I decide to import a technology like the steam engine or like the cotton gin that can make the work happen faster, it's worth that investment, right? So even though I have to now pay to bring the technology that I need, 
I can make more money now that I have it. So it's worth it, right? So like Japan makes that decision. Russia makes that decision, right? Bring it, just bring in the technology and let's use it. And now we can make more money now that we have it. Okay. All right. Those two questions um, I will get to. Oh my God. This <laughs> it's such a good slide too. And of course it's like, I'm just going to leave it like this so you can actually see the slide. Um, so frustrating that I did that. All right, so let's talk about the effects of industrialization. All right, well, one last question here. Let me move this over. If Japan imported all of the materials and technology, how did they get the money to import it all? So they still have money to do things like that, right? So there, it wasn't like there was no production. So, you know, before industrialization, there's still production. There's still tons of trade. You know, Japan was involved in the silver flow. They're involved in, you know, tons of different industries where they're making a lot of money. But in order to make more money, they need to invest in research, right? So think about how companies now invest, they put money into research and development, because if, I can find a better way to do this. If I can cut time, cut costs, cut, you know, shipping times, any anything like that, then it's going to be worth it. We're going to make more money. And so that's that's what happens. It's just putting money into that development, into importing the technology and the knowledge that you need to then be able to produce more in the long run. All right, effects of industrialization. So Honestly, the biggest thing, <coughs> excuse me, um, the biggest thing about industrialization is how much of an effect it has on our society. Before the industrialization, you have, or before industrialization, you know, it's, it, this, societies are, are running a lot differently. The way that genders break down, the way that families are, you know, people are kind of, you think about it, Great Britain, you know, you, a lot of people might live on a farm. They might not have to, like, leave their house. They can work within their house. Um, this is going to make the world a lot smaller in a way, right? So you have the ability to transport yourself fast between all different places. So it makes it smaller. We can get the time it takes to get to London from outside of the city is going to be decreased. Um, people are going to move into the city. All those different communication lines will increase. But there's also like a bunch of bad things too. So like because of an industrialization, you know, you got the like working conditions and all, there's a lot going on. So let's talk about seven different effects of industrialization here. Uh, first, families. So like I said, they had been sort of working in the home. This forces them to work outside of the home, changing the entire family dynamic, right? So now you have the woman and children working in factories, um, but those were not like good conditions by any means. So it affects family structures, family dynamics. Women in particular, um, there's a difference for women in terms of whether or not they were upper or lower class, how they were affected by industrialization. If you were a lower class woman, it was brutal. You're working in factories and you're working so many hours in terrible conditions um, and, you know, bring your kids do the same and you're not able to vote and you have no power in the, in the factory. So not great. Um, if you're upper class, it's not the worst. So this cult of domesticity is taking hold just this it's because of like mass culture, which we'll talk about, you have like advertising, right? So when you think about how women are portrayed, in mass media there's a certain like way that we see women today as like how they should be right so in this time the ideal woman would have been at home a homemaker right um and just super domestic right so that became this that became the thing cities are forming you know like there obviously had been cities before but like this level of urbanization is massive the number of people moving to cities is more than ever before. 
um, to the point where by the time we get in unit six, like today, more people live in cities than not. Um, but it's like massively overcrowded. It's overpopulated, lots of pollution. Disease will spread really fast because of all the people because it's not sanitary. Uh, so like things like cholera would spread through water sources, um, which is pretty gross. Uh, mass culture. So just the whole concept of consumerism didn't exist before then, right? So because of industrialization, you have so many more products being created that there's there's just plenty to go around, right? Like we can now buy things just for the sake of buying the thing. I don't need it. I just want it. I like that idea, which I know all of you are 100% familiar with, right? Like buying things just because you want it. That comes out of this time period because things are now created for, for profits and for we can make a bunch of them and we can make them cheap and we can sell them across the world, you know? Um, of course, it existed before that, but not to this level. Right, like before this, you have people investing in things like tobacco and cotton, cash crops, you know? Now you've got much more leisure type products and activities, even things like sports, right? Like sports as we know them today develop in this time period, right? Like mass culture like that, sports that we all watch together. Uh, you know, you think of like the Romans and gladiators, yes, but did Great Britain care about, did they have a favorite gladiator? You know, where they're like these really popular gladiators? Not necessarily, because it wasn't connected like that. Now there's all these like celebrities and athletes, you know? Same thing in this, yeah, by the end of this period. Um, the environment itself was extremely harmed in in this time period. None of this was good for the environment. We polluted the air, the water, everything. and are now dealing with those consequences. So good job, industrializers. Business uh, changes dramatically. You know, we while we do have uh, the appearance of a working class, you also have now extreme wealth. You have people who are making a ton of money on factories, on, you know, on all of this, they're, they're the ones that are investing their, their money into it and they're profiting off of it immensely. And so we don't have that really wealthy class before this time. Um, you also have things like stockholders, you have stock markets, you have just new tools to actually do all this. Um, and, then, and then monopolies, right? So monopolies will form as companies take entire, take control over entire industries. And you know, then we have to start developing legislation to break them up. And then class, like I mentioned, a working class is developed. So rather than they're just being rich and poor, they, the like stratification is getting wider. So the, the differences between rich and poor are getting bigger, but also there's this other class in the middle, the middle class, um, that is the working class. And so that is developed in this time period. Lots of effects of industrialization, y'all. All right, let's check the questions. Uh, what is the title your face is covering? Oh, I'll I'll go back to that that question. All right, did child labor begin at the start of industrialization? I mean, no. Like, people have been exploiting children forever, um, but for the most part, like in the in the amount that we're gonna see it in the um, in its like significance of this time period, yes. So, you know, we don't have kids working in factories before this time because we don't have factories before this time. So in, in some ways, yes, but in some ways, no. <laughs> I don't know if that answers your question. Um, what specific technological inventions should we be able to know and describe? I mean, you don't really need to be able to like list out any of the technologies for the AP World exam. The, these are all counting as evidence points. So when you're writing your LEQ or answering an SAQ question, it could be really useful for you to know a few of them. I would say steam engine would be a good one. Um, water frame would also be a good one. The water frame is what makes it possible to not have to build um, your 
I think this is what it is. And I have to build your uh, factory right next to like a river, right next to a water source. Or maybe it meant you did. I'm getting it confused. Basically, you don't need to know that many. Know the steam engine, know the cotton gin, know the water frame. That's enough. All right, I'll go back to both of those. You are welcome. Whoops. Okay. All right, we got a few more things, and then we're going to play Kahoot. So if you're feeling like not bored, of course, you're learning all about industrialization, but if you're feeling like, man, I really want to do something else with my Monday night, hang around. We're going to get to the Kahoot game any minute. All right, so a few responses to industrialization, um, and we'll talk about three. So, you know, massive effects, everything has changed. Everyone is, is affected by industrialization. Even if you didn't have to go into a factory, you're affected by the fact that they exist. Okay, so every, everyone is affected by this in the entire world. So what are the responses? How do people respond? One response is labor unions. Okay, so because you have all these you know, huge working populations now going into factories and different industries in the cities um, and their conditions are terrible, collective bargaining, bargaining begins. So this is literally, you know, I mean, this is like the perfect example is like you can see with, with teacher strikes, right? So the whole idea is in order to get better conditions, if you band together and you all refuse to go back to work until those conditions are there, then the people who are making those decisions, the management will have to cave, right? They can't replace all of you. So they have to compromise. They have to give those better conditions, you know, power in numbers, right? So this is what teachers are doing right now, right? Denver started today. Oakland's striking next week. Uh, LA just had a strike. Tons of teachers across the board. The Also the flight attendants, are about to go on strike or are thinking about it. So we're, we're actually seeing a whole like resurgence of labor union and striking. Um, and it's not like they go away. They, they continue throughout the rest of the 20th century and of course into the 21st century. Um, but this is a response to industrialization. Another response to industrialization are social reforms. So someone asked this question about um, just a circumstance when many people acting for the betterment of themselves. Oh, you know, all right, I'll go back to that question actually. So, okay, so responses to social reforms, social reforms. One of the biggest reforms that happen is just, it, just across the board improving living conditions, but um, education, not only like compulsory education, but just public education. You can go and get your education. You can learn how to read and write and think and do math. You can do all those things for free. That's massive. That is not something that has even really ever existed before. Education was reserved for the elites. And this is now a time when it's actually really in Germany first that they say, no, in order for us to create a society where we can band together, we can get better working conditions for everyone, um, where everyone can get the things they need, then you, we have to have access to education, right? We have to have access to the vote, right? You see a feminist movement begin um, where women are protesting and fighting for rights to vote. Um, you also have, you know, the like abolition movements, right? So you have the end of slavery. You have the end of serfdom. You have the end of, I mean, it's massive, like property ownerships for property restrictions for voting, right? Having to own property in order to vote, like that is no more. So all of these things are changing because of industrialization. So much of unit five is connected, all of it. There's just, it's all happening at the same time and it's all happening because of each other, right? So as we keep going through and talking about imperialism and revolutions and migrations, it's, you have to like really think of all of this as part of the same thing. It's a web. Uh, and then one more response to industrialization. This is kind of more of an effect, but just the fact that there's now, and this is a um, image from Freemanpedia, uh, my buddy, Ben Freeman. He 
has this perfect thing that shows like how the global economy is now existing. So of course you have a you have a global economy in period four, like the first time, right? Because of the Columbian exchange. You have these different parts of the world that are now connected and remain connected. But in period five, they're they're now like reliant on each other. They're not just connected, they need each other, right? They need each other in order to actually get the, the commodities, right? So for Britain, for example, Britain is importing cotton from its colonies across the world, right? So it's importing cotton from the United States, from Egypt, from India, and then developing, manufacturing textiles and shipping those out to like China, for example, right? Shipping them to everywhere. So yes, Angel, this is exactly that. The beginning of true globalization, yeah, right? Like it's not just, it's not just that they're connected, they need each other. So when the civil war happens in the United States and that cotton flow that had been coming basically stops, Britain is in trouble, right? And it becomes a whole thing in the US of like, how do we make sure that Britain doesn't support the South because they need the cotton? So, you know, and in the end, they, you know, during that time, they basically make up the difference by investing more in India and in Egypt. So yeah, it really is the like first, it is the first true globalization because you need, you, you know, they need it. They need each other. Just like, it's just like today, we can't like break off from anything. We're way too intertwined. We're very connected. Uh, social reforms led to what? Led to improved social, con yeah. Thank you, Jillian. Improved conditions. Okay. All right, one more slide and then Kahoot. So if your friends want to play Kahoot, the live game that's going to happen in just a few minutes, get them up to this watch page. Now is a good time to do it. So, you know, text your group chat and group thread and say, hey, guys, like, we're playing industrialization Kahoot. What you doing? Spread the word. All right, so a few, like, intellectual reactions. So while all this stuff's going on, these people are thinking, okay, but – now that we have this globalized society, now that we have, you know, the stratification of classes, how do we function? How does the economy look in this world? How, how should politics look? So these are four that come up in this time period. You should know a little bit about each one just to be able to identify it. Um, and definitely the top two would be more important to, to really understand than the bottom two. So the first one would be capitalism. This is like the person to identify with this is Adam Smith. Uh, and he is, this is this like idea of laissez-faire where the society will benefit from markets that are free from government regulation. So leave the, mar leave the business alone and it will, it will be great. It will be fine. And everyone else will benefit because business is good. <laughs> Then you've got socialism. In socialism, um, the person to identify with socialism is Karl Marx. Um, even though like Marxism sort of transforms into communism, it is this from this truest form, socialism. So you've got basically you can't have equality and justice unless there is no capitalism. Right. The, this whole idea is that capitalism creates these classes that are like impenetrable and there will always be an overthrow of the highest class and in order to stop that in order to actually have an equal society that is not harmed by extreme wealth um, and extreme poverty you have to abolish classes you got to get rid of class system you got to get rid of capitalism then and and then you'll be good um you know about sharing the wealth essentially um something to note is just like marx's ideas have been so skewed over time that even marx himself by the end of his life was just kind of like i don't even think i'm a marxist <laughs> so it just kind of changed a lot over his life another idea would have been utilitarianism this is just like it's not that we should overthrow capitalism capitalism is good because it leads to um, competition and innovation but you do need to allow for there to be a lot of reforms 
in order to create conditions that are the best for the greatest good, right? So in order to protect people, we have to have a government that is that is protecting them, right? That is creating those reforms. So it's sort of this like kind of in between, right? Like keep capitalism, it's good for business, but we also need parts of socialism to help things be equal and just. Um, and then there's anarchism, which is just like, Everyone leave us alone, let the local elites or whoever rule, and we'll be good, right? We don't need a national government. We don't need private ownership. We don't need people in charge of anything. Let's just let local people be in charge, and and then we're, and then we're good. So a few intellectual reactions to know um, are worth knowing. All right, um, I'm about to put the Kahoot on in the chat. Give me a number of one through, I don't know, 10 of how you're feeling right now. Or actually, I shouldn't have even done that. Yeah, give me number one through 10 of how you're feeling right now about industrialization. And while you do that, I am going to pull up Kahoot. All right, close video. Where are you at? Okay. All right. Okay, so real quick, let's see. Seven, eight, five, six. Not bad, not bad. Not bad. All right, good. Yeah, I would say get get comfortable with industrialization because it's it's coming up on your tests for sure. So, listen, we're gonna play this game. It's twelve questions long. Um, I want to see how you do. It's all about industrialization. It's all about this time period. I, if you've played Kahoot before in a fiveable thing, know that like sometimes it's kind of laggy and whatnot. But um, we're not gonna have Kahoot forever. We're gonna play Kahoot for February, and then we're gonna use our trivia app. So stay tuned for the trivia app. All right, where am I? Here we go. Kahoot. Classic. Oh shoot, you know what? I gotta I gotta I gotta prevent the bots. All right. Randomize, randomize. Enable two step join. These Kahoot bots thing are so annoying, you know? So the pattern's going to change every seven seconds, and I'm sure that if there's a delay, then it is what it is. But you can join now. Um, I'll put this music on a little bit. So there are a bunch of you guys in, in here. Get in the game for right now so that you can join. Uh, and while you are joining, I'm just going to talk just a little bit about 5 Plus, and I'll talk about it again at the end. So if you're not yet a member of 5 Plus, I highly recommend becoming a member. Um, there are so many reviews that we have done already. There are, I mean, there's like 20 videos uploaded right now, one from each week of the school year. So we've cut through all of the time periods through up through five. This is tonight was our first time in period five. And so if you're looking for to start reviewing, you know, you got to start soon. You guys are the last ones that are going to get a chance to get credit for two courses for AP World, and I can help you get there. All right, so, you know, we'll be doing live streams every week, and you can rewatch the replays, you can watch the slides, and once we launch our trivia app, you'll be able to replay all the trivia games as well. And I'll be live in May only for Plus members, so if you want to save your spot for May, you got to get in there soon. All right. Waiting a few more minutes. Hop in, y'all. I know the pattern thing is super annoying. Um, don't worry, ours won't have a pattern thing. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get started in, I don't know, 30 seconds. Still going up. Some people are still joining.
All right, and you guys can. Oh. All right, let's do this. I think while we're playing, you can still join. I'll just be down here dancing. All right, good job. Right, so Russia and Japan, state-sponsored industrialization. Memorize that. All right, we got a first place leader. One of the most expansive effects of industrialization in Russia was, here's a real picture right here of in, what industrialization looked like in Russia. I'm just kidding, that's not what industrialization looked like. Good job, that one was, I guess that one was easy. Mostly. So remember, the spread of mercantilist ideas. Mercantilist ideas are all about trade. This is really, it's really more about period four um, rather than industrialization. By the way, guys, we're looking for trivia question writers too. So if you want to write some questions for us, let me know. All right, which one is associated with Adam Smith? Nice. Capitalism. Socialism is Karl Marx. Good job, Jillian. Number one. I went through the leaderboard too fast. My bad. All right. Which industry was the first to be fully mechanized? Meaning... Wasn't really worried about anything done by hand anymore. Textiles is correct. You know, I really thought this one would maybe be a little bit harder, but apparently you guys are on point. Let's talk about this one really quick. So there are basically two industrial revolutions. The first one is all about like the innovation of steam becoming part of the, you know, energy sources. And the second one is more about like chemicals, electricity. Um, so that's the difference between those two. So the answer is steam, chemicals. Jillian's still in the lead. Shout out to Gaga for winning that. I don't know how many Grammys last night. All right, good job. Good job here reading the question, right? So, you know, if you just jumped over consumer, you may have missed this, but consumer would be, I'm specifically asking about who, you know, the people buying the products. So what's an effect of the people buying the products? They're cheaper because there's more of them. So always make sure you really read the question. Oops, got a new first place. Halfway through. All right, which combination is correct? It's going to be easy for you. I feel like we really drove in through those isms. Nice. Good job. Karl Marx Socialism. Frederick Engels was his, like, counterpart. They wrote the Communist Manifesto together.
All right, so remember that it was all these reasons except England, the British, they're not superior in any way. It's not that they just know things that other people don't. They just have the right set of circumstances that led to industrializing first. All right, one sign of the feminist movement. I didn't talk about this tonight, but I did talk about feminism a little bit. All right, Seneca Falls happened in upstate New York in the United States. The Berlin Conference was about imperialism. Congress of Vienna was a political alliance. Uh, the Sepoy Mutiny is in India, um, was a rebellion against the colonizers. All right, um, all the following ways except, um, well, I guess that this didn't specify what classes his family was from, but in general, women also went out to the factories, um, didn't necessarily stay in the home. All right, who developed the cotton gin? The clap heard around the world. Okay, from a worker's point of view, what did the factory system lead to? Easy, harsh working conditions. All right, we've got three more questions. This one has just kind of like three extras, but usually um, not so much. All right, I finally stumped you. Okay, so Germany was the first one to really pass like comprehensive reforms, right? So like public school, um, like expanded suffrage, um, healthcare even. So Germany is the first one to do that. Great Britain will come later. United States, later, later, still working on it. Japan, i um, not sure when they reform, mostly probably in the 20th century. Two more questions. Which was an effect of industrialization on India? Other than having machine guns now. Okay, so in India, they had a massive industry of hand-woven textiles, but because of the industrialization, all of that was then replaced by mechanized systems. All right, so that was a big effect in India that really changed society there. Uh, independence from Britain doesn't happen until a lot later. They don't get full independence from Britain until 1946. All right, last question. How were Japan and Britain similar? All 
All right. So remember that uh, industrialization in Japan was mandated by the state, but not in Britain. Um, private capitalists led the process in Britain, but not in Japan. And then foreign experts were brought in in Japan and not in Britain. So, but in both places, women were exploited in factories. Um, that's one thing they had in common. All right, we have a winner. Ashley, congratulations. Ashley, if you do not yet have a Fiveable Plus membership, take a screenshot of your phone and I will give you a Plus membership for free. So message me right after this game. Email me at um, hi at fiveable.me and I will give you, I'll give you a, I'll give you a free membership just because you won. 14 out of 15, not bad. Sorry, other two. You got to get a better score next time to win. <laughs> get results. Let's see. Can I show feedback? When I click show feedback, does it like set, does it show you specifically more feedback on your phone? I don't know. Or does it just like, are you, are you, oh, I see. You're like, you're doing this right now. Rating 3.5. Oh man. All right. Okay. So uh, I'm going to answer a few more questions. Um, and before you leave, uh, I am going to send you guys an email tonight reminding you of, to, of next week where we'll be talking about imperialism. You can register right now. You can just click over um, the link is like right next to you uh, and maybe Tom can drop it in the chat. So you've got it, but you should register right now. Come to imperialism so that you can, all right, Ashley, just send me a message, email me. Um, what are they saying? So yeah, register right now for imperialism so that you remember to come because you know, you got to know all this content. You, you're, these are these are like hot spots. All that we're reaching in period five and period six. This is probably where the DBQ is going to come from. Um, you really want to make sure you understand this this stuff. So you can join me next Monday night at eight p.m. Same place, same time, uh, and we're going to be talking about imperialism. Patrick Lassiter will be running that session. So um, you know, he's going to compare, do some comparing of responses to imperialism. Uh, and what imperialism looked like in the um, in Asia versus Africa versus Latin America. Uh, another thing that I'd love to ask you guys really quick is just, you know, one of you guys said, I really liked doing trivia now. Um, awesome. So, yeah, we're definitely going to be doing trivia all the time. And I'm just, like I said, I'm really excited for you guys to see our app so that you can play that there. Um, but just out of curiosity, you know, if you're not yet a Fiveable Plus member, is there something that you need help with? You know, is there something that you're like, man, if only Fiveable could help me in this way, then then like that would be awesome, right? Then a Fiveable Plus membership would make so much sense for me. Um, that would be really useful for us because we, I mean, I I want to make sure that you have everything you need to get a five when you take the exam, and so whatever I can do to make that happen. I want to do it. Um, you know, right now it's you're saving 55% off a membership. It's literally $20 for the whole year for all subjects. Um, you know, you don't have to buy it per subject to, to sign up. So we're the May sessions, the May cram sessions are going to be pretty hopping. They're going to be really, you know, we're going to have to like cut it off at some point probably because. I want to make sure that everyone that signs up gets what they need. So I would really recommend that you sign up when you can so that you make sure to save your spot. You make sure that you're going to get the cram sessions in May. That's like the week of the exam. I'll be live every week doing special trivia, special cram reviews um, just for plus. So hit get fiveable plus and sign yourself up. Uh, multiple choice question sets. Daily multiple choice question sets. That's definitely something we could do on the app when that is released. It's a good idea. Um, I have five low plus. Maybe helpful to go through maybe at least one corresponding. Yeah. So starting now, we're going to have trivia for every session that we do in every subject. And then we're going to start writing questions to like do the back ones too. So that when you watch the review for the Mongols, 
right now there isn't trivia attached to it, but I'm writing those questions now so that in a few weeks there will be. So that when you go and rewatch our, our live streams, all the videos, you can play a trivia game at the end and see where you land in the leaderboard. Um, okay, so feel free to pop in more questions. I'm going to stay for a few more minutes and answer a few of these. And awesome. So uh, what is this? What's tatted on your arms? Um, I want to see whose is better. Uh, obviously, mine is better because I don't know. I don't know what she has, but I'm not really going to fully answer that question. There are a lot of tattoos. Okay, let's see. Um, all right. In what ways did the railroad industry reshape or change American life and business in the late 1800s? Uh, that sounds kind of like a copied and pasted prompt. Um, so in general, I want you guys to ask questions that are just like really specific as to like what it is that you need to know about that. Um, but basically, like, so one, you have massive wealth in the railroads. You have a lot of people making a whole lot of money on the actual expansion of railroads. And then you have, like, you're decreasing the amount of time it takes to get from places. So because you have new products being created, all of those are being shipped out um, more often and there's more of it and they're getting there faster. You know, like you have more connections just between places. So instead of a slower form of transportation, you can now get there faster. So that would be the biggest way. All right. What made the working class different from the lower class? So it's always kind of a fine line, right? Like there's, because there is like a lower middle class and even like an upper lower class. But basically you have, rather than like, you know, uh, one class of the lower class, it's more of like unemployed or uh, dealing with more hardships, you have this class that is working, right? They're going to work, they're in the factories or they're working in whatever other industry, but they're not necessarily producing a ton of wealth, right? Not like the upper classes. The upper class is kind of sitting on, you know, a lot of wealth that is generated kind of off of these people. So the working class is sort of that in-between where they're, they're, they're hustling, right? Like they're doing all the things, but they're not necessarily totally, they're not super wealthy, but they're also like fine, right? They're, they're kind of, they have what they need for the most part. Um, it's kind of depends on where you are. Like he's, even the middle class has a lower and an upper. So it's kind of depends on, on, I don't know what industry you're working in. All right. Which country was impacted the most of the industrial revolution? You tell me, what do you guys think? Let's put up this poll. Which country was impacted the most? We have Great Britain, United States, India, and Russia. There's a poll. I don't know. What do you guys think? There's no right answer to this. You're never going to be asked on the exam to to prove why one was impacted more than the other. Um, I think you could come up with a great argument to say that any one of these was impacted the most. Um, I, personally, I would probably say that any country that had to deal with being colonized was probably impacted the most because of industrialization. I didn't even put that on the poll, which is not even fair that I, <laughs> we're not talking about it this week, but you know, if you think about a country like India, for example, or I guess you could choose India on this um, if, if you agree with me, but um, you know, if you think about a country like India or a many countries in Africa, many countries in Latin America, there was so much potential that was halted that just kind of stopped because these other industrialized countries colonized them, took control, exploited their workers, took their, their resources. Um, and then once they're even decolonized, they still leave them with basically nothing. So where we could have many of those countries being world powers today, we don't because they were exploited then. So that would be like, I don't know, that's what I would say. I feel like Great Britain was powerful before, they were powerful after, they're way more powerful after, but 
it's just me. I'll leave that poll up just for fun. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to delete this one. Okay, uh, if we get a five level plus now, does our membership expire at the end of the year or the end of the school year? It's the end of the school year, so you've got it till the you have it for the whole school year. But what I'll, what we're gonna be doing is like even like right now we're in an early bird of exam season, so it's twenty dollars. And so after this school year, what we'll probably do is like a kind of a flash sale where you can sign up in July and save even more. So like. I want you to have Fiveable in your next school year. I want you to have it this year. You are more likely to pass your exam with it than without it because you have so many more resources just to layer on, you know? You're you're doing amazing things in your classrooms. Your teachers are working hard for you um, and you're working super hard and this is going to complement all of that, right? This makes it so that we can, I can help you like really perfect those skills. I can answer the questions that you need answered so that when you wake up on May 16th and it's, it's test day that you're feeling like I got this. I know I'm going to kill it. I know I'm, I have what I have, what I need. You know, I know all the things I know what I need to do. I know the strategies um, and, and you feel good about it. And then I want you to sail into junior year and then senior year, like pull, get all the, all the college credit you can, because College is not cheap and it's not about to get any cheaper. And this is what we've got. So let me help you play the game, you know? Um, but yeah, it expires at the end of the school year. <laughs> long story long. Uh, which AP courses do you plan to add next year for Fiveable Plus? What do you want? Put it in the chat. Um, I used to do this last year. A lot of what Fiveable, how it exists this year is because of students that helped me build it last year. You know, like there were like 500 kids that started with Fiveable last year and it was like 90% of them passed their exams and they've helped me build it. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of options. We have a bunch of subjects now. We're going to be adding more next year for sure. Um, I would really like to have calculus. I know that's one that a lot of you guys really want. Chemistry, computer science, um, U.S. government, the economics. I mean, Look, there's 36 subjects. I want all of them. Like, there's no reason not to, you know. Um, but we've got to build first. We need you guys to support Fiveable so that we can keep building. And then we can add more subjects. So if you like what we're doing, that's how you can help us contribute um, and help grow this. Be a part of the beginning of it. Back to... All right, y'all. So these questions that are here are not necessarily, they were kind of already answered, but um, don't really have specific answers for them. So, or they're just like, this is basically just a prompt. So, um, all right. So I'm going to leave it at that. I hope to see some of you guys signing up tonight. I'm going to send you guys an email reminding you to sign up for at least, you know, come to the session next week, come to imperialism next week. If you're not already RSVP'd, if you're not registered, do it right now. Uh, it makes it super easy so that you remember, so that you can come here, you know, every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm here for you. Um, next week, Patrick will be here for you. The week after that, probably Dylan again. Uh, and if you want to see all these slides and um, see the replay, see you in Plus. All right. Peace. <laughs>